And it was 17 years ago that uh, I started podcasting in 2005. And in fact, at the time there, I went to a, a conference to present at the, the University of Southern Queensland and all the IT staff, as well as participants, you know, had a lot of questions about, about podcasting. So it still seems to have a, have a certain like a, a mystery with the technology and also a certain a charm, as it may be with the word podcasting, which I will uh, go into. So uh, uh, this is for people who watch this on the web, then people can read at leisure uh, some of these uh, parts. Uh, but I'll go right to uh, explanatory uh, concepts. This was just my uh, idea of a curtain call. And you can see also the background of this uh, slideshow of being uh, curtains. So it's uh, uh, a broader meaning than this, but uh, I want to specifically student generated content. And so it's a uh, turning student uh, foreign or second language presentations into online audio or, or video. And that's the senior reference is uh, where he reported for the online learning consortium that uh, my podcasting was an effective practice in the student generated content, especially or for EFL. And so I'm thinking of, uh, of uh, performances, uh, uh, polished works of students where they prepare and do their best, and then it may serve educational purposes for others. And so for the students, the online performances address a global audience. And so they have a sense of an audience. There's someone listening to them, not only the teacher for their work. And it encourages uh, integrative motivation, I think, and the active participation in the L2 using and content creating community. So I'm saying kind of a lot there in a, in a few words. Now, but, but, um, Usually the second language learners are considered like an audience, you know, that to be seen and not heard, you know, in native uh, uh, English or other speaking uh, circles. And so they may not even have a sense of agency toward the, the second language, you know, if it's not, not encouraged. So you know about like say uh, an imagined community where they imagine themselves, you know, then, uh, it is just speaking with uh, the groups. And so I, I find that uh, integrative motivation is stronger than the usual instrumental motivation of just, you know, to, you know, pass exams or to get grades in class and that kind of thing. Although I did interview one student who, who showed both integrative and uh, instrumental uh, motivation, you know, depending on the, the circumstances. And uh, so for uh, students to be like a content creators in the L2, then it uh, gives them like a strong uh, impression. And also if there's some response, which there has been, you know, from a global audience then students are especially delighted. So even if they are anonymous, which they sometimes they have to be in these uh, presentations, then still, then they are, uh, you know, delighted that uh, they are being heard. Okay, so uh, podcasting was a portmanteau of uh, iPod and uh, broadcasting. So the idea of casting uh, is uh, interesting, the metaphor that gives a lot of like a charm to this uh, term that you know that's a casting is where the, the actresses and actors like in a play or a movie are decided. And so that's related to the, the curtain call. And also casting is uh, in like a fishing, like where you cast, like to catch a fish or even like a casting a net, you know, that makes an interesting, uh, you know, metaphor. And so it ha has a certain charm, but uh, there's, a, there's still a bit of a mystery of, you know, how it exactly it, it works, which, you know, I'm not going to go into much, but in the 2005 journal article, then I spoke of uh, pushing sound files to subscribers with portable MP3 players uh, for listening on the go. And this opens up new educational potential using hitherto unproductive time for learning. So the, the, the thing about the, the podcasting is it refers only like to an iPod 
Uh, and uh, there are other MP3 players too. There are always uh, to have been. And then also it, uh, not only by subscription, but uh, often you can just go directly to, you know, to a website or a permalink, you know, where there you can listen to uh, a, a podcast, you know, which I think is uh, better. And then uh, the one spin-off of the technology was uh, course casting. That was it means like recording the lecture parts of a class, you know, for student support. So uh, if students, especially if they're absent, then they can review the lecture parts of a lesson, you know, or uh, they can review or listen any number of times, you know, to what the, the teacher was was saying. It, it never seemed to become popular, but. Uh, in the 2007, then uh, I reported in a journal article about course casting a semester of a bilingual education class. So at, uh, at our Osaka Jogakuin University is a content-based uh, EFL, so it more lends itself to this kind of, uh, of a process. But so as I was saying about the iPod, it's a proprietary technology. So it's the companies technology. It's an Apple's iPod, you know, uh, versus uh, the generic uh, uh, audio. And then another explanatory concept is a ease of use. So often it's a vital for technology uptake and sustained uh, success of the, of the websites. So social media sites and other sites, you know, that uh, but they're putting more and more of the back end like out of sight, but then we can't adjust or we can't access and you know the, the controls on the other hand. So it looks very simple on the surface and like a, like a smartphone. It makes people feel smart, but actually it's the technology that's smart. And so it, and it, so it turns out to give us actually less control, you know, as we see less because of the, you know, the ease of use, which contributes to the success of the of the companies. And there are uh, business models, you know, they could be a uh, paid or, or free web services or, uh, you know, subscription or just a one-off podcast web page visits. You know, so uh, if, the, if the site is, uh, is a free, then, you know, is it uh, sustainable? Then is it uh, a reliable business model? You know, such as uh, advertising, and uh, which you know it may it works for some you know big sites, you know, and then we can you know uh, st we stay with them because they are reliable. Whereas we sometimes we see with uh, the smaller operations that they are unreliable because either they they suddenly go out of business and disappear from the web, or else they start out to free. And then uh, suddenly they're charging, you know, for the same service and all the work that you put into it. And this happened with a slide share. So recently that it was acquired by uh, an, another uh, company and they've put a, it behind a paywall. So that, that we didn't sign up, you know, to have our content sold by the, you know, that uh, new company. And so there's a question of, you know, always reliability or sustainability of the, the business model. So let me show you briefly what it looked like at uh, the beginning in 2005. So this was the Japan casting a blog, and I said paid for this, uh, you know, service. And so one example of uh, of a podcast at that time was the the similar proverbs in Chinese, Japanese, and English. So it was a performance by students. They spoke English and their own native language. So it turned into a, like a trilingual podcast. It may have been one of the first. Uh, multilingual uh, podcasts, and uh, they they uh, found that uh, that some English proverbs they had their counterparts in their own language, so it was a very interesting uh, uh, discussion. I noticed that there's a lot of uh, detail in this uh, page, and so uh, uh, recently the the interface is uh, simpler, as we'll see in a, a few minutes. And then uh, the, this was in 2005, and then the, the, my uh, podcast and became avail available for free in uh, iTunes at the Apple Music Store. 
and it looked uh, sort of like this, so people could could uh, click to to listen. So it was pretty good that you know that uh, Apple you know provided this uh, free service, uh, but uh, they had another service called uh, like iTunes U where where you could uh, use an interface like this to make a learning management system for audio. And uh, uh, they, at, uh, because of Apple Japan you know, was reluctant to offer this free service, I was up and ready to go with my research and ready to use that, but it wasn't available in Japan for about five years. And uh, so, and then uh, uh, another point that, uh, that I should mention here in showing that this is what the course casting, you know, uh, uh, the podcasting blog uh, looked like. So I, I was paying for uh, for a, a, a podcasting blog, and then around uh, 2006, the year after, suddenly it just disappeared from the web, and so I lost all that uh, all that work, and I had had uh, a backup site at uh, the Odeo. Uh, so where I placed this uh, the course casting a semester of a bilingual education class, and then the Ev Williams in San Francisco, then suddenly, then also he then suddenly just dropped this uh, audio, which I'm sure it, it took a lot of uh, you know a lot of server space and cost a lot of money, and then suddenly audio went completely off off the web, and I ended up with a nothing, and so I couldn't use iTunes either. So all my research and creative work was was lost for 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 many years, and uh, the Ev Williams incidentally start, st uh, stopped this uh, audio in order to start another site called Twitter. Okay, so uh, I always had this uh, you know this sense of uh, of uh, loss and. and uh, and recently, some colleagues in India, in our World Association for Online Education, so then they urged me to get involved with the podcasting with them. And uh, so uh, then it occurred to me, well, you know, I really always wanted to revive, you know, those, uh, the podcasts that had, uh, that had won many, like, awards and so much international recognition at the time, and then suddenly disappeared for for all those years. So just this year, or just recently, so I revived the, the, this uh, podcast with the Indian colleagues. So some of the considerations for rebroadcasting, you know, content from the, the earlier podcasts. So maybe not using all of them, but, uh, but ones that are, like I said, timeless, as they say in journalism. So in uh, journalism, if something is like a time sensitive content, and they have to get it up there really as fast as they can. But if there's nothing special happening, they might put something in that is a timeless content that I learned in uh, studying a little journalism at the university. Now, the humanities content is often timeless. So the, the ones that I'm you know, using today, then I really needn't mention, you know, even when the podcast was made. Yeah, but the technology, on the other hand, you know, evolves rapidly. Yeah, but when you're, you know, researching something or doing like a literary, a, a literature, you know, a, a literature report for a, a paper, then you need to go into the, the history. So uh, it should also be known. And so that I'm also like adding a new content. And then uh, I, I will state the year of uh, creation, you know, where it's, uh, it's uh, relevant. So these are all considerations you know, when setting up a podcast. And then which podcast software and ho host sites to use. So I let the Indians decide, but they, so they decided on uh, the Hub Hopper is an Indian the site and also uh, uh, Spotify, uh, uh, Google, uh, Google Podcasts. And then I suggested the Podchaser, which they are also using. And then uh, we need a contact email for the site. And so we set up a new Gmail account you know, only for that purpose. And then as for copyright, uh, uh, then I suggest you know, at least uh, uh, Creative Commons you know, attribution and non-commercial is, is sufficient for you know, my purposes. 
and then uh, the audience, which was originally, you know, like Japanese learners of English or or that uh, Western learners of Japanese, you know, was broadened in favor of developing country learners. So their colleagues in India are trying to uh, reach, you know, South Asian, you know, listeners. And then you need to think of like the length and timing. So shorter is usually preferred uh, with uh, you know people busy nowadays. And then uh, release uh, one podcast a weekly on a certain schedule. So that's certainly plenty, you know, uh, frequent uh, enough for, you know, for, for us. And then we needed a you know a channel description that's always shown, and an introductory trailer you know, which uh, should be concise and clear. So I used a very, you know, you know, EFL teacher English and speaking very, you know, slowly and, and clearly to make that uh, introductory trailer. And then uh, the, the, the categories of our podcasting uh, site in Japan casting are, are very uh, uh, broad. So, and they're going in this order, starting with, Japanese traditions and religions, the contemporary society and education, and that little comparative culture, and then some on languages and linguistics, uh, and then uh, online education later. And so this is what the uh, Japan casting channel then looks like now at uh, Spotify. That was just the first uh, you know, episode with the uh, introduction and a trailer. So you can see it's just a, you know, it's a brief description. And uh, it says, you know, that there's an episode every Wednesday and then the, you know, non-commercial and attribution and then the names of the, the team members. And so very, the, the simple. So most of the, you know, the technology is, you know, is, a, is in the back end and we can't see or, you know, influence it. And then a uh, little about podcasting pedagogy. So, uh, so again, uh, as I introduced before, then preserving and turning students L2 performances into podcasts. You know, so it, it gives uh, the students a sense that, hey, their, their work is valued, you know, that uh, someone wants to listen to them and even their, their English speaking, you know, may be of, of value. So it gives them a sense of uh, agency and uh, they can see that I'm sincere about it. And so it has an authenticity. So, so, so these are, well, I think themes that uh, uh, Anthony has often developed over the years. I think of agency, authenticity. And uh, so uh, we're certainly you know, um, you know, in tune with that. And so about like making the podcast, you know, that gives like extra time with the, the teacher and like small groups of, of students. And so usually it's in pairs or, or small groups. So especially teaching at a women's college, like they go, most of all, they want to avoid scandals, you know, of like teachers getting involved with students and the students themselves, you know, can be, you know, aggressive towards the, you know, towards the, the teacher and they like the, the teacher. So, so it's better to have them there in the pairs and then they have them, you know, using like a microphone and computer, have them, like a recording their performances that were in like a presentation contests or or other types of uh, events and uh, that the school performed or else uh, maybe like a final it could be like final presentations in your class would be a common you know uh, material to use sometimes we say oh that's you know remarkable student presentation and it might be useful to others and so it motivates students to actively join the L2 using community. So it gives them a, a sense of, of an agency where they're not just like a, a passive, you know, a, a, a witness of the, you know, of the second language. And so it's someone else's business. So especially in Japan, there is a tendency that, that the English and other languages are, they call it tanin goto. So someone else's business. And so that it, and so they they don't identify, you know, with their with like a, a L two, you know, identity, and uh, so that that you know affects their uh, their motivation. 
And so learner generated content, you know, is authentic, you know, and gives the students a sense of an audience and uh, also a sense of accomplishment in their, in their second language. So it's very motivating and it helps them toward, you know, a, a bilingual identity. So certainly, you know, with, uh, in my case, with the Japanese as yeah, so my, my uh, second language. So it is I certainly uh, have, uh, you know, pr produced a lot in the second language and, and certainly have like a bilingual uh, identity. And uh, I am, uh, you know, bicultural, you know, to uh, some extent, you know, so where I can, you know, it's like a pick and choose, you know, things that I want to, you know, to kick out of my American identity and take in Japanese, you know, good characteristics and like being like, a, you know, more sociable and uh, so forth, more considerate, uh, you know, toward, toward others. And I had to Osaka Jogakuin University that it was actually a pioneer of uh, mobile, you know, L2 listening. And so in uh, 2004, and uh, that, uh, for the first time in the world, like uh, iPads were distributed to all students. So usually uh, Duke University in the US that gets the credit for this, but it was actually that Osaka Jogakuin in that, uh, that uh, started this. And not only giving students the iPads, but making faculty made, you know, listening files, you know, that's on the students' iPads uh, that they could use like uh, uh, in the third line there for entering students, you know, to adjust to, uh, you know, listening to native speaking teachers and often for the first time where they had learned English in Japanese before. And so they need to get up to speed of listening. And so, so they had all these listening materials that to get during like a student orientation, you know, or listen to for a lot for a week and then they're ready to uh, hit the ground running when they, they enter class. And then the, the listening files on their iPad are used and across the curriculum in like a discussion or writing classes and so forth. And then in uh, 2012, then when iPads came along, then we changed to, to giving iPads to all students. And then they could be stocked with like a iBooks, again, like uh, faculty made like a iBooks uh, according to the curricular content. Uh, or else we could also use like uh, uh, ebooks from uh, publishers, you know, which uh, uh, we have done. And then the campus wide and a uh, Wi Fi then made it possible for students to like to use the internet during class, like uh, with their, their iPads or iPods, and then uh, uh, with the iPads. And, and uh, the having the internet access then makes a sort of a mobile infrastructure. For the university, then which we can, you know, count on for our um, activities and integrating the, the internet. And uh, podcasts are suitable for various formal or informal learning. So at our school, like a content-based language learning, so content and language integrated learning or bilingual education, as the case may be, and uh, used for extensive listening or pleasure listening. So making their idle time of students useful, like while they're on the train or like awaiting in some uh, dental office or, or something, then now that time can be used productively for learning. And the podcast can also be, you know, used as international open educational resources. You know, so for listening to certain languages, you know, or at a relevant level and subject matter, you know, although it does take time and teacher dedication to select and adapt, you know, OERs. But offering uh, free content, you know, not only the podcast, but also like a background, you know, materials. Then, uh, uh, speaking of which, uh, the above line uh, about adding uh, scripts, you know, so not only like the, the podcast themselves, when by adding like a, to, to transcripts of, a, of all or part of a podcast on the web or adding then discussion questions, then makes it a ready-made lessons. And so less a uh, less burden and are more, you know, uh, user-friendly, you know, for teachers to use them as uh, open educational resources. And so I have done that, for example, like a Japanese a legend you know, it would be uh, very, uh, you know, shocking or exciting, but, 
but I uh, have made discussion questions so they could get that, you know, what is sort of the deeper, you know, purpose of the legend or what it's really saying, you know, to give a deep insight into Japanese culture. You know, so uh, contributing the, the you know podcasts and uh, supportive uh, uh, content or materials, you know, then uh, uh, contributes uh, language and content to developing country learners. Oops. Ah, then uh, and so the in conclusion, so the in retrospect, I think digital broadcasting, you know, should not have been tied to a proprietary technologies of one company. You know, the Apple iPods, iTunes, or iTunes and youth. And although casting makes interesting metaphors, as I mentioned before, like in fishing, you know, but generic terms like a sound files, digital audio, or radio are more understandable. So, by the criterion of ease of use, you know, podcasting was uh, more complex at first, but now subscribing is easier and free podcasts can often be accessed unconditionally at a permanent web URL. And so I think that's uh, the best way to have a permalink where people can just uh, go and uh, just listen one off to the, the episodes that look interesting. And the business models are still unsatisfactory for the sellers and the buyers. You know, while free sites may be ethically questionable or less re reliable, you know, so uh, and so you have to pay for using a free site, you know, by giving up your data, which they may sell to, you know, other, you know, data brokers and, and so forth. So raising, you know, ethical issues or, you know, uh, that they may not be reliable to do what they originally, you know, promised. And, but there will always be situations where just listening, you know, aids learning, you know, so where people can't watch their driving or, you know, on the train train or something. So, so podcasting will always be, you know, have a, have a, you know, a market or a demand. And so along with the increasing global population of learners online and educational podcasting, you know, would continue to grow more widespread. And the collaborative projects such as Japan casting, you know, contributes to the open educational resources movement. As a which, as you see, my, uh, my colleagues, uh, especially uh, Dr. Ramesh Sharma, who you may know is a, is a leader in the open educational resources movement. Uh, and so here are the references. And uh, if you see this presentation on the web, so I plan to, to post this presentation to uh, academia.edu with a link to the recording that you're you know experiencing now for people to relive this uh, experience and so these are uh, uh, the uh, the references used and uh, you'll be able to click on those uh, links to read those uh, articles also thank you very much uh, and uh, I look forward to any uh, questions and comments that you may have